Something weird is going on here in LA. I've lived here for seven years and moved many times and I've never seen it like this before. I would say this is one of the worst times to move to LA if you're looking to rent a place and wanna get a good price for it. So remember when everyone was leaving California? Well, they left and now the rental market is actually pretty competitive. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at why this is and what to do if you do want to move here. Hi, I wanted to see if I could do a self-guided tour today. First of all, we don't have anything available like Cali in person. I wanted to see if I could tour a one-bedroom unit. Actually, I do not have any one-bedrooms available right now. So, you do have a one-bedroom coming up for October, but there's nothing available to be seen at the moment. Is it normally like this there, or is it just like really busy right now? Things have just been very chaotic with COVID has changed. Uh, some, you know, we're full, but normally we always have something available. Have you ever seen it like this? Like when you moved here? No, no. When I moved here, we actually only ended up looking at like three apartments because we got super lucky in the third one we found. We were like, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. There were always units available everywhere. Yeah, now there's like even these big buildings. It's just so, I've never seen it like where the bu big buildings don't have units available. I have to be out of this house that I live in soon and was totally caught off guard with how hard it is to find a good apartment now because it wasn't always like this. So it used to be you could walk into any of these buildings pretty much any time during the day. They'd take you for a tour and you'd have your choice of a bunch of different units available. So back when I toured this house just a year ago, the rental market was very different. We were able to look at it multiple times, think about it for a week, and we also got $500 a month off the rent. This time around when my landlord leased it, someone got it immediately. One person had a showing and they took it and they are paying $1,000 more a month for rent. And that's because if you look online, there are only a handful of units like this even available. And it didn't used to be like this. These days, they're kind of flaky to even make an appointment, and most of them are 90% plus capacity. So the units that are left are generally the ones that no one really wanted. So why is it like this now though? I went to a new construction apartment building in Hollywood to talk with some of the people working on developing this building about what's going on in the rental market right now and how long it will last. The big thing in LA is that there's such limited new inventory. Mm -hmm. They don't really let you build for better or worse. It's difficult to build. Therefore, that's a huge component of why we have the housing shortage in terms of both apartments and homes. So back in the 20s, they issued 400 housing permits per 1,000 residents. But now in the 2010s, it's much harder to get a permit with only 25 housing permits issued per 1,000 residents. So while the population in LA has been growing, the number of houses and apartments has not grown at the same rate at all. So some of the reason that the market is competitive doesn't even have to do with COVID. It more has to do with how difficult it is to build in LA, resulting in a low supply in comparison to the demand. So really, this has kind of been a long time coming, but there's no doubt COVID played some role in the fluctuating rental prices. Why are so many of the bigger buildings nearly fully occupied now? I think that they had a lot of vacancy and then people saw an opportunity to get a potentially a lower rent mm -hmm. and they came back in floods and people wanted those amenities. They want to be able to get out of your apartment and enjoy, let's say a pool like here or a rooftop deck. And so the bigger buildings with those amenities really filled up quickly. For example, I toured a unit in this building. It's a pretty big building and typically there'd be a number of rental units available, but they only had one left. And this unit was right up against a hotel. So you didn't actually get a whole lot of natural light and it seemed pretty overpriced for the last kind of odd unit left. But even so, this probably leased within a few days. To who you might be wondering? Well, a lot of people are relocating from places like San Francisco and New York where they're used to even higher rent than LA. So in the last year, actually a lot of people have moved to LA from New York. I've heard a lot of leasing agents talk about this and I've actually myself seen a lot of people on social media and in person move from New York. For a while, this was just a theory I had, but Jason also found this to be true. More and more, we saw an influx of people coming in from San Francisco, New York, all over. It was actually a lot of people that either had always thought about moving to LA or it's kind of like the second city to San Francisco and New York. Also, we saw a big influx of young roommates. A lot of those people went home to live with their parents and ultimately ended up coming back. 
So the rental market, I think, is as hot as it's ever been in LA. Obviously, the cost of living in New York is even higher than LA, so these people don't mind paying even more for rent than what we're used to. It was specifically when I toured this building, I was shocked to find out that a one bedroom is 4,600 a month. And the leasing agent told me that quite a few of the residents had just moved from New York and weren't super shocked by the price. So with a whole new group of people being able to pay a lot more in rent, that is something that helped to drive the price of rent up in LA. Another factor is the amount of people now working from home. With people spending more time at their homes, they're able to justify paying more for a better place that has natural light and some actual space to work. That's why it's harder to find a corner unit or a unit on a higher floor. And even when you do find it, it's gonna be a lot more expensive than it used to be. And another big factor is people that are looking to buy but can't because the buying market is also crazy right now. The home market is so limited that they are just not taking the time and don't want to focus on it or have lost out on a number of homes. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they're in the rental market as well. And they're not necessarily renters by choice, but they're kind of forced into it because of the fact that the home market is so difficult right now. It really just comes down to supply and demand. There's overall less of a supply of rental units than the demand of people that want them. So it's not totally impossible to move right now, but I do think if you wanna to move to LA, you need to be more prepared than ever. So how do you actually find a decent place these days? There's a few tricks that you can use. First, if you find a unit that you like, apply immediately. Don't wait or it could be gone. If the apartment's having a showing, try to get there first. And if you like it, try and be the first to apply. These days, apartments go fast. And if you don't jump on a good unit, then somebody else will. If you don't make it, the place is gonna be rented. Typically, that's the case now. You should be going into looking at an apartment and be ready to make a decision. Yeah, definitely. Like right after you view it. Yeah, like you, you don't have many much time to think about it. Yeah. Um, typically, there'll be one or two people behind you that are willing to make that decision quickly. So definitely, if you find a place you love, don't wait to apply. Another one of the best ways to get a decent price is to drive around and call the for lease signs that you see on the street. These people are likely not advertising online, so it's much less competitive to get them. You can take a walk or drive around an ideal neighborhood and you'll find a number of these for rent signs that you can call and check out. You have to drive around. You have to look at signs. Things are under marketed. And that's how you can really find a kind of a diamond in the rough. Totally, like the for rent sign. Yeah, you yeah. get, here's the thing, like those, um, it's expensive to advertise your apartments and a lot of people don't do it. Um, so you'll find them just put the for rent sign up and it's been mismarketed and, and it's on a beautiful tree lined street and you're like, oh, I actually, for the difference of the like $800 of across the street, this, is, this will be it, you know, this could do it. It's totally. kind of how I found my second apartment. I drove around Santa Monica and I saw a for rent sign and I yeah. saw that as an opportunity. You'll see a ton of these in Santa Monica and West Hollywood, but really they're scattered all throughout the city. And the one other way that I know of is to tour the places that have really bad photos online. Kind of the trick of the trade is that a lot of times you'll see really um, poor photos. That doesn't mean the building isn't nice. Right. Uh, I've had a lot of friends, family, et cetera, that have found apartments that just have been poorly marketed. Yeah. So those are like the only real like kind of ways to find something where you might get a decent deal. They still go quick though, so be, be cognizant of that. This is a strategy I've used before, and I want to show you guys proof that it really can work. I found a pretty poor listing online and decided to go check it out in person. So this one's only $1,700 a month. That's a really good price for a one bedroom, one bathroom. It looks like maybe a little dated, but in a cute way. Like it's actually, I really like the kitchen. I think it looks cool. So this one's been listed for almost a month and the photos just really aren't selling it. It's mostly of the floor and you really get no sense for how big it actually is. So I figured this would probably be a perfect one to go check out in person. It really has potential. So keep in mind, this unit is in an amazing location. It's a little dated, but the location really makes it worth it. Kind of a small living room in here, but I think for 1700, like that's kind of what I expected. Here's the kitchen. It's actually not bad. Like it's pretty cool in the colors and everything. Like, I think this is pretty cute. It's just not very modern, but you're not gonna get a dishwasher um, or just updated appliances, but they still work, I'm sure. But this is kind of a bit of an issue. The fridge doesn't fit super well. 
I feel like it's a solid, solid bedroom. This apartment, I actually think for the price is pretty fair and pretty good. I, it just needs to be cleaned it out actually. So this apartment, I would say is great for the price, especially considering the location. Sure, it has some quirks and it's a little dated. It doesn't have a washer and dryer or anything like that, but I think it honestly just needs to be cleaned. And once it has some furniture in it, it would be a really cute spot. So it's possible to still find a good place in LA, but I do think right now is not a great time to move there if you don't need to. The rental market just doesn't have a lot of supply and maybe in a few months, things will be different. But either way, if you're looking to move here or really anywhere, these are some good tips that you can use. Looking for listings that don't have great photos and the for rent signs can help you find a good deal. So that's gonna be it for this video. Hope that you guys enjoyed and learned something and I will see you in my next video.